So to assess the lung, we will first choose a probe that's appropriate for the pathologies we're looking for. We'll start in this tutorial with the linear probe because it's kind of easy to see what's on the screen. You see the ribs, you see the pleural, you have high resolution. You don't see that deep though. So if we were to look for stuff that's deeper, like pneumonias, effusions, B lines, we would probably choose another probe. Now, lung ultrasound is pretty easy technically. You just take the probe, take it near the distal tip of it. Indicator goes to the patient's head. Now, you just put it in the chest and you will see the structures. If we look for a pneumothorax, where do we look? Well, air would go up, so I would look at the, patient, the patient's chest and just actively think, where would air go? And here's the highest part, around this area, so that's probably where I would start to look for a pneumothorax. When the patient is stable and you want to be as sensitive as possible, we will look at four interrog interrogation points. Upper half, then lower half, medial and lateral. So one, two, three, four. So let's do that. As soon as I put the probe on, you see on the screen that I get an image. I get a, a rib. Let's center the pleura. So now I have two ribs casting their acoustic shadows. Immediately behind, we have this bright white echogenic line that's the pleura. Always think about depth and gain. We'll decrease depth to see our structures as big as possible, yet while seeing a little bit of more stuff in the, the far field, in the bottom of the screen. So I'll adjust gain. Normally, if we put too much gain, it's kind of harder to see the shimmering aspect of the pleura. If we decrease gain a little bit, we will see it a little bit better. So I'll decrease gain. I'll do it maybe like this for this exam. So four inter interrogation points, upper half, medial, lateral, medial, and lateral. So that's a pretty rapid exam. You just assess if there's lung sliding or not. What we typically see a lot of people doing is putting themselves very per perpendicular to the skin, the patient's chest in medial, but as they go in lateral, they keep the same position. And on the screen, I don't see anything, so I'll give myself a little bit more depth, but I, I still don't see my structures. But look what happens as I tilt the probe laterally. At some point, voila, I have the pleura, I have the ribs. And that's because now my probe is perpendicular to the pleura, the ribs, the, the rib cage of the patients. It curves pretty rapidly, so do think when you go on the lateral side to curve your probe appropriately. The other mistake we see a lot of people doing during their workshops and in real life is to go way too low. And then what do you see? Abdominal stuff, the liver and the spleen. And that will not allow you to see your structures of interest. Now let's say we were looking for pneumonia or CHF or, or pathologies in, for which we need more depth. I would not choose a linear probe. I would choose another probe. So let's change right now for the, the phase array probe right here. So I'll just change that on the system right there. Now put it back on the chest so you have an image on the screen. Immediately we see it's harder. At first I was really frustrated using the cardiac, the phase array probe, because the image is coarser, it's not as high resolution, and you don't see the ribs as well. I kind of see that, yeah, maybe there's a shadow there. So my thought process whenever I use a low frequency probe is to just look at the screen. Now I don't see any beelines. If, if he had beelines, I would see them. I would see these vertical artifacts going from the pleura down. They're white, echogenic. They move with the pleura, well-defined. So I don't see any beelines. Let's immediately decrease depth to magnify our structures in the near field. Now, as you go from far field to near field, you see how it gets brighter immediately. So no beelines, I decrease depth. And then I'll adjust my gain so that I see the pleura as well as possible. One of the pitfalls of the phase array probe or the cardiac probe is that it's kind of meant to fit in between the intercostal space. So you might not see the ribs as well, so you might need to just move up a little bit, center yourself on the rib, see the shadow, identify the rib, thus allowing you to know that that bright echogenic line in the background is the pleura. As I tilt my probe, the A-line that's right here disappears right there and as I become perpendicular to the pleura it reappears so by tilting the probe and staying perpendicular to your structures in medial and the same thing in lateral you optimize your image here's the A line the, the pleura they're equidistant right there and they don't tell us anything clinically but technically 
I know that's probably the best image I can get of my patient's pleura. Now let's see what happens if I take the curvilinear or abdominal probe. It's also a low frequency probe, but you'll see the image is slightly better than with the cardiac probe. In my practice, I would take the cardiac probe or phase array when I have medical patients. When I think I look at the lungs and then the heart, I would take this probe, the abdominal probe, when I have trauma patients in whom I'll probably assess for bleeding in the abdomen. So let's put the probe on the patient's chest. And what you see is again a picture that has a lot of depth where our structures of interest are minimized. They're very small in that near field. So again, I don't see any beelines. If there he had B-lines, I would see them, but let's decrease depth immediately. Adjust our gain so that we see it. Now, it kind of strikes me that I like this probe a little bit better than the phase array, the cardiac, because I see a couple of intercostal space, one, two, three. It's wider. It gives us a better view of what's going on in our patient's chest. Again, as you go lateral, make sure you stay perpendicular during your four interrogation points in your patient. So that's it for long ultrasound.